are they gonna crush the Vienna team or I, at the moment when I see the, the, the girls who are playing I think they, they, they play with the moderate team so they leave some key players out uh, it's most important to win the game so 1-0 is enough and uh, find their, their game their game let's see if they can find their game but for now uh, Vienna is taking their attack towards the German goal uh, called by the referee instantly uh, attack on the uh, neck or house yeah um, I'm trying to speak uh, four languages this weekend so I sometimes <laughs> mix up some fortunately I can only speak two that's enough <laughs> but uh, Vienna is not taking um, this game for granted and they go all in and that is uh, the only chance they have uh, to attack and uh, try to s uh, score in that. I think that the most important thing is uh, yesterday we saw the, the Duisburg game uh, they have to get out of the clusters so the, 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 the problem uh, was yesterday for Duisburg that uh, against Switzerland they go too much uh, in the scrums and uh, holding the ball and if that's happened like uh, at the moment uh, this time the game stopped and uh, based on my experience I never saw a team scoring out of a cluster no uh, that is indeed you need to have a really good strategy like people need to be down under ready to kick off uh, to leave the scrum or the cluster as we are calling it right now um, but here we see a free throw for the white team or no, no it's actually a clustering at the surface uh, and the ball dropped out and uh, the German team picked it up and they're really nicely attacking towards the goal with some team play you see now three German girls underwater uh, they're going in but not too hard they're waiting to see their opening I guess uh, but the white team doesn't leave that unnoticed then they do some counter attacking uh, here we see uh, a really strong girl attacking on the goal. Yeah, that was Lisa. Is Lisa in the national team? Yes, uh, prospect for the national team and uh, basically she plays uh, uh, forward. Uh, but she did not manage to get the ball into the goal. But here the German girls are trying to get another attack but the uh, Austrian girls are straight on it and bring the ball to the top. Yeah, that is always a risk when you when you uh, attack the goal and uh, the defender brings you up to the surface directly over the goal. That is the most uh, heavy occupied uh, area in the whole game. Do you have any tips against to avoid that? Yes, don't de <laughs> descend. <laughs> okay, girls. <laughs> never go up to the surface. Never so go up. Tip from a German national coach: never go up to the surface. No, no, the, 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 yeah, the service is evil, like Wolf said. Uh, there, 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 there are three tricks in underwater rugby. Tell me. Descent, descent, descent. Okay. And the fourth trick is never <laughs> go to the surface. <laughs> uh, for all you newbies watching these games, and I really recommend that because um, you, you, you learn by doing, but you also need to get the inspiration from somewhere. So if you're watching this game and uh, you want to be as good as uh, the German uh, national team, um, descent, descent, descent is the tip. Uh, yeah. they're having I, some I nice think it's, a, uh, it's uh, when you look to, to the screen at the moment, the, 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 the blue team is very positive between the first and the second line. And so if you this area you control, that is uh, Op an attack on the open goal and Austria scores. How how do you feel? I don't care. Okay. I'm a, I'm a member of this book, but uh, thi this is was a, a mistake. So that is a clear mistake. Uh, the 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 counter attack was not proper defended, and it was uh, a perfect. Uh it was a perfect attack and a yeah. not so good defense. There was no defense, space. <laughs> Way to go, Austrian girls. Um, 
but now uh, we see Germany trying to do the same, even though the Austrian girls are actually managing to be at the goal in time. Yeah, now it's of course the pressure on the Duisburg team, so when you're behind the... the they just put the ball in the basket. Maybe they need this pressure in order to yeah, win some the game. Yeah, sometimes girls have to wake up. Yes, so, so now it's 1-1. One, one. Yes, and uh, this was basically the goal was done by Lisa. We talked to her for mm -hmm. the, the, the and she put uh, under the, the bottom of the goalkeeper and uh, pushed her up. So it was a very good goal. So You could see that she went in and wanted to make a 1-1. One -one. Maybe she doesn't like it when they're standing behind. No, she's uh, uh, all, all girls are emotional. This book girls are especially emotional. But uh, I think it's uh, important that they, they get the rhythm because uh, each game will be harder. So this will be tough uh, for them uh, in the future. Do you think Duisburg uh, has a chance to take this amazing uh, Pokal home? Mm, there's always a chance. But uh, I did not see all the teams, but uh, I'm always uh, respecting Norway and the capability. This is uh, for me always the number one team. Mm. Good, and uh, we're soon going back uh, after the timeout that uh, the Austrian girls took, um, probably to get some pep in, some motivation back. They went from 1 0 to 1 1. Yeah, the, the problem with that, that this, this, uh, the Duisburg team have to win this, this game to keep their position into the group and uh, so when you have this dramatic mistake that you get the goal on the empty basket uh, you need uh, self-confidence again and that is uh, something so currently I see a lot of uh, locking of the ball uh, that doesn't enhance the quality of playing there's now a free throw for the German team And it's the most important to see how much underwater time the girls have and can establish. Jorgen is sitting here with a stopwatch, timing all the girls on their underwater time. Um, not really, but uh, you can check. Uh, uh, ideal player making a pass, stay in position. Now he, you can see this here. Number three uh, is yeah, nicely uh, staying in position and yeah. keeping the ball and swimming mm. towards the goal again. Yeah. And so still and staying under, I'm impressed. That, 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 is, uh, that is the ideal case, so that you at least in three uh, uh, playing positions you continue. Now that you have the double pass at least, and uh, ideal case uh, three times. Uh, and uh, don't stay too long on the surface, because on the surface... Uh, Nothing happens on the surface. Nothing happens. So that th th this is th th one of the biggest mistakes in underwater rugby. People swimming on the surface, they believe they're in the game, mm. but actually they are out. Mm. Yeah, but they don't realize because they have nicely watching what others doing. Yes. So as long as they can breathe, they are out of the game. It's uh, somehow mentality uh, uh, check. And Germany is trying to get towards the goal, but the Austrian girls don't really allow that. So. I think it's clever that Germany is trying to keep the ball in their own possession to avoid another counter-attack on an open goal. But they're not really coming close. And here we have a nice swim out of the Austrian goalie, but she doesn't get hold of the ball. So now Marion is attacking with the number nine. But she's attacking alone. Yes. But on the other side, Austria is also attacking alone. And here we have another counter-attack. Will she manage to score? Will she have other players to pass the ball to? Will she stay underwater? Yes, she does. But the referee's call, no. This is just a cluster going towards the surface. Something that Jürgen disadvised to do. Yeah, I don't like it. I hate it, basically. You can do it when you're leading 1-0. And you have 30 seconds to go. But then we're not leading in 1-0. <laughs> so it's 1-1 one, one and we still yeah. have uh, one, one and a half minutes to go. 
Is this already the second half of the game? No, it's the first. No. First half. So for everyone who's uh, paying attention, we are in the first half. One minute to go and it's 1-1 one, one between Germany and Austria. To be more precise, between uh, Duisburg and uh, Wien. Yeah, the, the Duisburg the team uh, decided not to put all the uh, national players into the game, uh, which makes the, it's uh, more complicated uh, to find the, the game rhythm. So um, hopefully that for Duisburg uh, that will not uh, be on the end against them. So sometimes it's not uh, good uh, to leave someone out uh, to give him some rest, especially in the key position, mm. because it's important in the game that uh, all positions are uh, good uh, uh, positioned and um, the ladies uh, find the, the game rhythm. Uh, ke keeping out uh, some, some key position uh, players, it's al always disturb uh, the whole tactics of the whole, whole game. Mm. We'll see if no, Duisburg did not manage to score in the last seconds. Uh, it's uh, half time now, so we will switch sides. Uh, in the meantime, I have Jürgen here. He's the... Jörg, not Jürgen. Jörg? Jörg. Okay, Jörg. Like George, Joe, whatever. George, <laughs> Joe. We have a George, Joe here, whatever, from uh, <laughs> Germany. And he's the national coach. So if you have any questions, t uh, if you want to hear some tips or tricks on how they make such a great team, uh, ask them in the live chat and I'll read them out loud. In the meantime, I will ask if someone in the pool area would like to remove the cable that is hanging in front of the middle camera. So here we see Devril trying to get some pictures and snaps probably of the Austrian team. Yes, there he goes. Yeah, I think the Austrian team uh, uh, played quite smart. They, uh, uh, their defense was uh, quite solid, especially uh, when the attack comes from above the goal. They put the ball quite uh, quick to the surface and uh, the counter attack was fast and uh, that was uh, well deserved 1-1 one -one or the 1-0 and that thing so uh, I believe this book uh, was thinking that it's much easier but that is always when you underestimate the team uh, but that, that sports you can tell that every time you can tell what is uh, the other team is doing um, yeah. The, the players must feel it by themselves. No? And the water rugby is not only playing the game, it's also mentally how do you prepare, how do you go into it's a game? Every sport, every sport. If you're talking in Germany about the uh, <laughs> soccer national team, mm. no? where you expect them uh, with so, ma so many world champions, and then you see what happened, then it's uh, become very, very terrible. Yeah, it's the same actually for the Dutch national team. But let's not go into that fight right now. <laughs> We're here at Underwater Rugby in Berlin. We are watching the girls game between Duisburg and Vienna. And uh, both teams are playing well. I think it's a bit of a shame that they are too much locking the ball up. So it's a lot of scrumming around. But let's see how the second game second half is going to happen. In the meantime, Devil is trying to uh, get into the conversation. Well, into the conversation. Can you hear me now? Uh, we can hear Devil. All right. So I, I saw Denise Schmutz of um, the, the, uh, the Austrian club Vienna and uh, uh, she was really excited. So they, for them, this is a big thing to be able to beat Duisburg if they can do it. And they have the one one tie so i'm just telling you they're psyched thank you for the live update from the pool area devril um and we get a comment here uh to see that uh 
Wien is not being intimidated by Duisburg. At first glance, they can seem very intimidating, and that's true. They look like a real team coming in their team outfits, having their, so to say, German look like we own this. And um, when you see the Austrian girls coming in, they look like a happy gang that's ready to go out for a dinner party. But in the meantime, it's very equal on this game. Good defense from the Austrian girls right now. Um, but is this Lisa again who's coming mm, in? No. Lisa mainly coming from the left side. Mm -hmm. So, s no. Uh, Deverell <laughs> tried to steal uh, my phone. Which is uh, very interesting. Oh, I, th I saw Duisburg make a change on the middle, so Heide came into the game. Uh, she's a German national, uh, one of the German national goalkeepers, uh, to put more pressure and control the, the game from the middle. Oh yeah, no. that will be enough. To, uh, oh, that is uh, the referee said uh, penalty. Penalty. Yes. This is penalty. As far as I understand the game. Mm. It's good that the German national team coach understands the game and can tell oh. us oh. that this is <laughs> I don't know if I understand penalty. the game. I, I would say I, I <laughs> when I was a player, I played for this book. Uh, and um, uh, that was a, a long time ago. I felt like 100 years ago, so <laughs> something like that. No. But uh, um, so I, I have won several games and I lost several games. So now, now it's a penalty. Really interesting to They're see Duisberg is attacking. Yeah, Marion is attacking from above. She's uh, getting nicely under. Is she getting under the goalkeeper? Oh, mm. and, oh and it's a goal for Germany. Yeah, in 2015, uh, she was at the World Championship uh, the record scorer of the whole tournament. Um, so Good that she uh, managed to add another goal to yeah, her list, but sad for Austria. She is already in age, uh, which I would say, <laughs> you're a national player, then people are wondering how, how long you can play in a national team. But her mentality, her physics, uh, uh, her engagement, uh, it's uh, like you could see here in the, in the, the penalty throw. And there's a timeout for, jo uh, for Duisburg. Um, but now it is 2-1 uh, for Duisburg. And I'm sorry, I need to clear up the game here. Uh, Austria is also wearing uh, their team outfits. Sorry if that was not clear. Yeah. I just tried to make clear that they look like a happy gang that does not get intimidated by Duisburg. But we'll see if they are managing to get it back to 2-2 or what will happen now. Uh, the blue team took a timeout or not? Blue team take a timeout. It's now over. Yeah, but when we're looking for the history of uh, some uh, Champions Cup, we always see the, the, the dominating teams are from Colombia, from Germany, and from uh, uh, Norway. Um, that is uh, historical, and I think this time as well. Uh, it's uh, interesting to see in, Ger in Germany that uh, there are always different teams uh, becoming a German champion. So there's not uh, one team uh, always dominating, uh, which makes the German lead quite interesting. And for me as a head coach of the national team, uh, I have of course a big group of uh, girls uh, to select off. Mm. That's a luxury that not every country has. Yeah, I think in Germany at the moment uh, we have uh, eight teams which playing in the in the league, and uh, it's uh, an interesting league. And now we see uh, in the game that uh, Duisburg is of course a more comfortable position, so they are leading. Oh, and what they great put a goal! And which is a shame uh, for the Austrian yeah. team. It this was not a needed goal. 
but uh, the German girl saw a hole in the goal, basically, yeah. and yeah. pushed this it in. This was, uh, uh, I think, number four, Monika. She uh, was also a member uh, last year, um, well, the last championship in the national team. And uh, she seems always for the before the game quite nervous, but actually she is uh, in the water and totally different person. Maybe too tricked to um, intimidate or to under let her un be underestimated. No, she's nervous when you when, when I talk to her. That is normally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but mm. this was a great uh, attack from from the thir uh, from the top of the, the and that's because not yeah. letting it go by there they're trying mm. to make 4-1 but Austria doesn't let that go unnoticed and they are uh, floating up to the surface yeah the, the Austrian defense is basically quite solid on the position on the goalkeeper and the defense so there's actually not uh, too much space but what is totally missing on this enables Duisburg to control the game is the forechecking Yes. So the the, the 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 offense player did not really d uh, disturb the the, the Duisburg game, so they just try to swim in a, uh, into a pass, but uh, they have they have more than the freedom uh, to play the ball, and the the, 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 the when Austria get the ball, it's uh, mismatched by by Duisburg. Uh, if this something happened uh, against a stronger team, it's. Uh, it will be more more uh, dangerous, but as long as they control the ball, it's it's good. So there's a okay another penalty throw. Another penalty. So they showed uh, the the goalkeeper was with the shoulder in the basket, which is easily done when you're a girl since you don't have the broad shoulders. It's it's, it's a matter of tactics. Mm -hmm. When you see uh, the, the, the one of the best uh, goalkeepers in Germany, they are so tiny, uh, tiny girls on the Duisburg game as also when you see them sometimes outside the water and you're playing goal. So it's a matter of tactics. I don't know, uh, 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 not tactics, uh, tec um, um something you can practice. Yeah, practice and something like that. So good defense of the goalkeeper, so th watching the ball and something <gasps> like that. And she saved the penalty. Uh, well Great. done, Austria. Great. Yeah, Ulla was uh, not controlling the ball to, uh, in in that sense. So this uh, was not good, uh, but uh, great defense. Uh, or the the uh, positive thing in that uh, defense was that the um, goalkeeper was always between the goal and the ball and uh, was not passive to wait what happened so actively into the uh, game in this and uh, so the attacker which basically should have an advantage um, did not have mm. uh, because the, the attacker has to uh, react we have only two minutes left it's 3-1 and Austria just saved the really nice penalty and now it's a free throw for the white team and they try to steal the basket but uh, unfortunately she was a little bit too late and uh, Dasberg is at just attacking straight uh, do you think they are gonna try to lock up the ball for one and a half minutes uh, no that's it will be they try to find the rhythm and their play I think it's 3-1 game is basically over by one one minute 20 seconds so but in one minute 20 seconds a lot could happen if you are very distinct on being yeah. able to get your goal maybe Dasberg is angry about the penalty and they still want to make this 4-1 I think th th when ladies are pissed off that's, that's always something you should <laughs> avoid <laughs> How do you deal with that as a coach? Oh, that's a difficult question. I think that's one of the secrets I should keep. <laughs> so if, if the ladies, uh, if I say something, I would do that uh, um, or have a tactics, it depends. Um, it's, um, 
the good thing is uh, as a ladies coach you have to, to deal with a lot of emotion but uh, if you deal as a men's coach you have to deal with 15 other coaches in the team so two different ways i see a snorkel floating by i wonder if that was just badly and mounted goal for uh, Duisburg, so they mm. could uh, manage uh, to bring in their uh, offense again and find the rhythm and now this uh, this goal was uh, like the last goal of this book really something which it sh uh, should like uh, uh, attack from the one side pass to the right side and then a strong attack uh, and finishing with the goal uh, this was the second half and uh, the end score is 4-1 uh, Duisburg managed to score in the last <coughs> 10 seconds and we're now preparing for the game Akkeren uh, Sea Dragons <coughs> and um, I would like to thank you for your commentary and I think the audience would like to thank you for the insights of the German national team Basically, I have to make you upset. I will sit the next three games because I want to do the girls' games. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I came here. <laughs> um, uh, I would also like to uh, bring up that I think that the Austrian team has the best warm-up. Uh, maybe the German team can learn something from that. When they do their warm-up, they have a team song on and they have their warm-up dance with squats, jumps, swinging arms just to get their uh, mood going i think mm -hmm. that's a really nice way to do your warm-up and come together as a team um we we basically established in a, in a drum team a, a quite uh, solid uh, preparation before the game mm -hmm. so we have a meeting point at that time we go to the swimming pool then uh, at a certain time they meet for the warm-up they do it individual, not with a team song, but they have their, their own individual music or motivation things. Then they have uh, 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 the swimming after this, and the German team swims uh, before the game around uh, 1.4 kilometers to warming up. Mm. I think I'm gonna hand over the commentating back to Wolf, getting two guys ready he's uh, currently doing his warm-up I don't know if we can see the video screen but he is uh, jumping around <laughs> uh, he's shaking um, he's doing a little pirouette he's totally uh, getting excited to commentate this game I'm so excited. thanks a lot uh, to Kim from the social media team here um, which is uh, greatly organized by uh, Lisa from the World Champions Cup. Thank you, Kim. See you later. Bye. So here we are, Jörg, back again. I missed you. Yeah, I missed you too. So it was one week without you. I could not. Ah, that's that's too long. That's quite too long. So coming up the game, we have uh, Akaren uh, in blue against Victoria Sea Dragons in white. Huh, that should be a difficult game for Victoria Sea Dragons uh, and uh, quite a lesson against the. Um, the the champion of the last Champions Cup, Akaren is uh, what? Last champion was uh, Langen. Last year? Yes. Ha! Huh. It all sure. blurs up in my mind. Thank you for reminding me. That's why I like to have you with me, Jörg. You just keep me updated <laughs> with the things <laughs> happening in reality and not my own bubble. How many so lies in one sentence now? <laughs> Lies? <laughs> it's not lies. It's just mistakes. It's it, it, there's a big difference no, between lies and mistakes. No. You ah, said you said <laughs> you, you mean ah, I, you mean I lead you in my life? No. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you if you could just you know you could be my little <laughs> devil set sitting on my shoulder whispering in my ears. Yeah. That would be amazing. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, we have uh, 172 people in the live stream. Uh, good morning, Norway. Ready for some uh, dragon breakfast? Ha. Uh, where if uh, where is Dallas who told yesterday said something about uh, waking the dragon? Uh, when we uh, Lars is, uh, was in the chat too talking about Eva. Yeah, well uh, Eva will stay with us uh, again in Germany. Lars, I'm so sorry we bought her back, and one of your players got all the money, so you have to find out who. 
So, um, this will be a different, uh, difficult game for Sea Dragons. We saw the Sea Dragons yesterday. Um, very young team, uh, as I heard in the live stream chat. And uh, Akaren, a very experienced team. Yeah, I think Akaren is uh, really one of the top teams of the, the this Champion Cup, and they aiming for the.